So guys, before we get started, don't forget we do have that amazing discount code, thanks to Tier Zero Games, going on right now. And all you have to do is put in ZW Games five to get five percent discount on your total order at tier zero games.com the links will be in the description below what's a youtube down here from zephyr war games and today i'm going to bring you a different type of video i'm going to be bringing you the meta underdogs now i know it's a little bit difficult with kind of the environment that we're in right now to kind of dictate what will be meta what is going to be meta um, all we can really do is go off of past experiences and future expectations with certain decks and the way the decks are going to evolve with cards we've received. So just as a quick introduction of everything that's going on, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out on anything during this isolation period. We are bringing you both competitive decks and fun decks alongside combos and a lot more videos than we usually would do because of this isolation period to keep you guys entertained as much as possible. Also, we've had the news that Eternity Code has been delayed in America and, of course, Worlds and Euros has been cancelled, sadly. Um, with that being said, European countries should now be receiving Secret Slayers at some point this week, with the release due as of next week, uh, alongside the Mechanical Mechanizers, I believe it is, the new structure deck, and reprints for the Shadow structure decks. So you can pick those up from your local online stores now. Alongside with Eternity Code, now I believe the European release of Eternity Code is going to be sooner than the American release. That may change, um, but until we know more, we cannot say for sure. With that being said, we are going to have loads of new deck profiles coming out, loads of new combos from Secret Slayers as well, so do not worry about that. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to take you through Meta Underdogs. So these are decks, in my opinion, that people can stew are either past their prime, untested, or... Um, don't feel that they're going to be the top three decks. These decks that I'm going to list for you are decks that are still very, very viable, can battle very, very well down to the wire with both or all three of the meta decks in my opinion. So my opinion of the top three meta decks right now is Shadol with Invoked. I think that's the best combination. Any kind of Shadol matchup is always going to be difficult because Winder is an incredibly powerhouse floodgate, uh, floodgate card and monster on itself. It is pretty much on the same level, in my opinion, if not better, than Colossus. So Colossus was a Floodgate monster, but it had built-in protection, whereas Winder is a Floodgate monster with less attack, but it has built-in protection. It just says you can only special summon once, so it lets you get a little bit more. If like Colossus said you can only search once, then it, might not have been as, it wouldn't have been as good as it was. Second, I kind of can skew that Dinos are near enough the second best, purely because they have powerhouse cards with inside their main deck. They can battle toe to toe with the Shadow Invoked matchup as well, depending on what build you go with. And they can also produce some very important go first boards and second boards. And then my other third in the top three was um, Rockets or Dragon Link in that sense. And purely the reason for that is they can also produce insanely powerful boards, but they get beaten by the further two. They really, really struggle against a Winder and they can really, really struggle against a UTC if the board has been cleared or negated or anything like that. They have no back row to back it up or anything to negate from there on. Now, moving on to my list of the meta underdogs. Now, I'm not going to put these in like a, any type of particular list. These are just going to be decks that I feel are have the potential to do really, really well in the meta. So brand new decks as well. Some old decks that people think are past their prime and some decks that have been left in the lurch but have got insanely better thanks to the brand new Master of Five. So we're going to start off with the list and on my list straight away, we'll go with Medolce's. Now, Medolce's were incredibly powerful in Master Rule uh, 3, but they didn't have the support cards that they're going to receive in Eternity Code and the support cards that they received throughout the periods of the new Link Monster and the new XYZ Monster. The deck obviously was very, very powerful towards the tail end of Master Rule 4, and going into Master Rule 5 is only going to get better because they're now no longer limited to only having or needing to go into a Link Monster. So the non-target shuffle of Tiramisu is incredibly powerful. The fact they've got two one-card combos that OTKs your opponent out easily and non-target shuffles their cards back is incredible. Not to mention that as soon as Eternity Code comes out, they're going to get two brand new cards right here. One of them is basically a searchable imperm that has an additional effect. So it's actually insane what this deck can do, and do not write it off. In Master Rule 5, as soon as we get back to normal tournaments, and you can still judge the meta with online tournaments. I know Simo is doing an, a massive online tournament with PPG. The Brotherhood in London have also started to do an online tournament as well. So while we are in this period of isolation, technically you have the ability to build any deck you want, test it, play it, and possibly even win with it. So budget goes out of the window. You can build whatever you have and whatever you want. 
Um, Konami also posted out yesterday about Skype duels. I think that's a great idea to kind of get face-to-face -face interaction and physical play um, over online play because I'm more of a personal physical player uh, than online player myself. So that is a very, very good thing to keep testing, keep your skills in line and test any deck you want so that you know as soon as this crisis is over, you can come out of it on the other side and go, right, that's the deck I want. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Konami keep everything frozen for now. So the only thing that changes is decks get better with new cards coming in from Internet Code and it naturally starts to progress that way, rather than dropping another ban list for a format that we haven't really had a chance to play in yet. Moving on to the next one, we'll go with Fluffles. Now, we've all seen my thoughts on Fluffles. I think they're incredibly powerful. They got brand new support the other day as well. Um, and they're going to get a little bit better as we go. Now, under Master Rule 5, um, they got a lot more versatility. They have a lot more uh, ease to build the board out. I showed you a couple of card combos that gives them a first turn play. Um, the exact same with like Prank Kids as well. You have to... You keep the deck as core as you can, but you put in these little engines that allow them to make meta combos, in my opinion. And these just give them the fighting edge that when they have a detrimental weakness, so with Fluffles, they have a very, very weak first turn board. In the past, it was literally Sheep and hope that Sheep floated enough to get you by. Now they actually have the ability to make Union Carrier, lock your opponent out of the extra deck, and then go into the OTK the next turn. So decks like that certainly have a lot to play around with and certainly have a lot of potential. Stuff like Buster Blader as well. The fact that they're going into Master Rule 5 and also having the ability to make Union Carrier or the new Buster Blader Link, which makes their Dragon Lock combo of turning all your cards to Dragon, shifting them to the vents and negating their effect a lot more easily doable. Now, of course, the best side deck card right now is going to be Dark Ruler No More, purely because so many boards are building up and the only out they really have to Dark Ruler No More is having a negation trap. Or if they've got a, an Abyss on board, they then need to activate the trap to then activate Abyss that then targets the Dark Ruler to shut it off. So unless you're opening up a Judgment or finding a way to get to a Judgment in your opening hand uh, to then openly build your board, Dark Ruler No More is going to be one of the best go second cards to kind of shut everything down. Uh, and I honestly think that that is the way to kind of go with it. Moving on, we've got Heroes. Now, I did put Heroes into the top five, so I'm not going to touch on these massively. Heroes was my personal fourth choice, and that's where Medolce's Fluffles uh, and Pendulums can kind of float around. Pendulums is one of the first decks that people feel is past their prime. P Pendulum players themselves do not. They think it's very, very good. And, of course, with um, Celine, the deck got better. Uh, it has lost Electromite, which was a massive, massive loss for a Pendulum deck. And they didn't really get to adapt much from Master Rule 5, purely because they still have to go by the old rules of putting their cards to a zone a Link lost the points to when it comes from the extra deck. They can still flood the board like No Tomorrow, and they can still produce one of the best and most powerful first turn boards around. For people to try and out Dark Roll No More, they are playing the Zephyr Trap and playing a bit of a Zephyr Engine in order to do so. That kind of hurts the consistency of the deck, but it does give them an out to Dark Ruler no more, especially when your board is sitting on the Endymion, uh, the Endymion monster plus a uh, Vortex Dragon and a Jackal. You want to keep those negates on board because that is a very, very tough board to break without Dark Ruler no more, and that's where the Zephyr or Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing comes in as well. Going on to more decks that people feel that are past their prime, two of the best ones right now, which I say do not sleep on. If you've already got them, keep with them, build them, make them better. If not, they don't need to adapt too much. And the best thing about these is one deck is above budget, one is the deck is well below budget. So you've got your Orcists and you've got your Salamangrates. Both decks are still incredibly powerful. I do have a very, very powerful meta-relevant deck for Orcus, and I also have an updated version with budget in mind for Salaman Greats as well. Now, the Orcus one comes from Dennis, who's taken it to locals all the way through Master Rule 4 and has done incredibly well with it, and he's adapted it minorly for Master Rule 5. The only issue with that is Orcus Return is insanely pricey right now. I think it's like 20 to 30 quid. Whereas if you look at Salaman Greats, the biggest money card that they needed for their deck was uh, Sign of Mining, which has now become an Ultra, which was about seven to ten pound before the lockdown happened it might have gone up during the lockdown but in this period because world has been cancelled and euros has been cancelled there should be more meta decks out in the uh, the market because by the time we get out of this the reprint season might have come in as well unless konami freezes and pauses that uh, and you'll be able to get more cards that are meta relevant um, for your decks to build them and make them better 
So definitely do not sleep on Orcus or Son of Man, uh, Man Rex. They are both going to be incredibly powerful. Orcus is still very, very powerful in the sense that they can control the board. And then with a card like Dean Greasy that can then go into Boral Sword can win the game outright through that. Salamangrates are a lot more control in my opinion than Orcus because they rely more on the back row. But the fact that they have the ability to recycle their back row means they do not need to flood it as much in the deck. They can search it, they can send it, they can add it, they can do everything they need to. And it's one of the decks that can still operate with the link format in the Master of Five. Uh, and it all depends on what type of extra deck engine you want to play, whether you go for like something like Horse Prince or whether you go for uh, the Leo uh, and just how it kind of operates. They're not the number one decks, they didn't break into my top five, but they are decks that will certainly be forgotten about during this meta period, and they are something that you shouldn't sleep on, because if you come up against a Salaman great player and you're like, whoa, I thought that was a dead deck, you're going to lose. The deck is still incredibly powerful, and like I said, Salaman great over Orcus is going to be a hell of a lot more budget as well to build and play, and still very, very strong. Moving on, we got for the final two, or... Um, Four more decks in my opinion. So you've got Cyber Dragons. Cyber Dragons going into Master of Five is going to be more powerful. Um, if you mix it with Orcus, then you've got another nice spicy edge to that as well. But the idea is that they can now make Infinity within their first five summons to stop them being the beard, and then they can extend it even further into a Seagate that can protect it. Plus they've got Overload or um, Protoplant Verti Anaconda to help make their Overload Fusion plays for their OTK to be even stronger. Uh, so they've got a nice balance between going first and going second, and that's kind of what gives the deck a nice underdog edge as well. And in my opinion, Solar Drains has been an underdog deck for absolutely ages, um, and people still do not expect it. They just let it go, and, and there's cards that appear in engines, uh, and then when you actually face down a Solar Dragon like pure deck, you forget how consistently controlled they are with OTK on the board. And like I said, with Verti Anaconda, they got another nice consistency boost for that. With Master of Five, they got a consistency boost for going first, so they can now search out that Overload, have a Seeger, have an Infinity, or have more Cyber Dragons, so they can just go Overload, pop a load, Cyber Dragon negate, you left the monster in attack, Cyber Dragon's going to absorb, and go from there. Then, of course, we've got Subterras. Now, Subterras can kind of float along the same line after Eternity Code with Trap Tricks because they get that brand new Trap card, and of course, uh, Autoglyce as well. But right now, Subterras have a nice balance of monster control and back row control. So the only issue with them is they have a, a bit of a weakness going second, unless they open up something like Dark Roar no more. But then even by doing that, they don't really have the cards to explosively go off to pull your opponent's board apart. They still need to turn to set up. Um, that being said, because there's gonna be so many decks that are gonna be like, Rah, there's my board, try and break it. Subterrors, if they're not facing anything that can pick their board apart, it, during the end phase of their turn, they can actually take their time to set the board up, lay everything out, they've got a Fiendess to negate, they've got a Subterra Guru to flip face down, and then they're backed up by loads of back row, especially stuff like uh, Final Battle, Judgments that they're already maining, uh, and kind of other cards like that. So they do have a lot to play around with and they do have a lot to protect, which is why they're another underdog deck in my opinion. Then moving on to the final two, and these two are two brand new decks. These came out of Secret Slayers. Uh, you've got the Eldritch, and you've got the Adamante. Now, I know, I'm know i pretty sure the names have changed for the Adamantes, um, but the Eldritch, we'll start from the Eldritch first. It's a bit more control, it's zombie-based. You've seen that the main Eldritch monster, or the only Eldritch monster, is insanely pricey right now, and that's purely because it's only come out in the, the, the States, the American States. So once the European market starts getting flooded with Secret Slayers, uh, it should bring the price down a little bit more. Uh, people are playing Eldritch and Vote, and... The cards just have a lot of control power. You've got a very, very powerful boss monster in the main deck. They've got a lot of back row and spells, so they don't really worry about Dark Ruler no more. They can play around it, they can flood their board, they can get on board what they need to, uh, and being able to use Eldritch as either a pure control deck or a sub-engine of another deck can really, really make them a meta underdog. But of course, from Secret Slayers, the most underdog deck, or the deck that has the most potential, is the Adamantes. Now, the Adamantes are a synchro-based deck that come at the exact right time, moving into Master Rule 5, purely because they now no longer need to worry about Link Monsters. This deck also has the potential, along with the Eldritch, to get in more support in the future, um, and they actually have a lot of power. So they've got a lot of control power, they've got a lot of OTK power, they've also got a lot of back row and front row to kind of get the deck going. The issue with that is the majority of the deck is secret, so the prices are crazy high right now for the cards that you need free of, at the very least. Now again, once this hits the European market, I hope those prices start coming down for all of you guys out there that want to build them, and I also hope that it gives you the opportunity to build them and play them as well, because they are a very, very fun deck, and they do look awesome. Like, the Synchro Monsters look absolutely beasty, as you can see right here. 
So that is it for, I've tried to keep it short, sweet and simple. There's probably a couple of other decks that are still there under the radar, like Dracos might be able to do it, stun decks, anything like that, that are kind of anti-meta decks. Um, I haven't really considered purely because these are the underdog decks. These are the decks, like I said at the start, that I feel people have either slept on, uh, have forgotten or think that they're past their prime, or may not even realize that now we're moving into Master Rule 5, this deck gets insanely better or think, oh, I'm moving to Master Rule 5, that deck can't do it because it has to rely on Link Monsters. Uh, that's not the case. Even if the deck does rely on Link Monsters, um, the deck itself is built to do that. So it's going to be able to move forward. It's going to be able to control the board still. And do not think the Link Monsters are dead because they are far, far, far from it. And they're still going to be able to produce some insane boards as well. As you'll see from both the Orcus profile and Salaman Great profile, alongside an Eldritch and of course Adamante profile as well. So we're going to try and keep building those for you, give you combos as well so you can understand the decks uh, and go from there. I hope you liked this video. I hope it gave you kind of an idea of decks that you can build and test out during this period. If you're like, if you're personally like me and you're like, I do not want to play the number one deck because I hate, absolutely hate playing mirrors. I think mirrors, depending on what type of mirror it is, can be quite fun. But most mirrors are a bit boring. Like I, I want to know what my opponent's playing, but I also want to see something new. I want to see a different strategy that they play. Um, so I like playing decks that can either counteract those decks or decks that not many people are going to be expecting because then they have a tougher time siding for that deck or being able to play around it. Like, I know in this period where time is, is so tight in a game, um, I prefer it when my opponent goes, what does that card do, what does that card do? Because the chances are, because they don't know my deck as well as I know their deck, they're going to misplay more against me than I am against them, and that will get me just as many wins as me just generally outplaying them with my deck. And that is why I kind of... I tend to go more towards the meta underdogs decks than I do against the number one decks, depending on what I'm trying to get. It. If I have to and I need to go for the number one deck, then I will do uh, to get where I need to go, but I'd rather have fun playing the game uh, and, and try something out a little bit different. So, with that being said, please smash the like button, hit the notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on anything. Uh, let's keep this video going throughout this period, and all the support that you guys provide us allows us to keep doing that and providing it to you guys as well. For now, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time guys, as always, happy dueling.